Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of creative homes. This week we're returning to a Coney Bell tiny house community in North Carolina to meet Patty and take a tour of her stunning modern tiny home. This multi-level tiny home offers a lot of living space with a small footprint and it's filled with custom touches to allow the space to best serve her family. Hi, I'm Patty and this is the Andromeda House. found out about Tiny Living and Oconee Bell through the good old fashioned uh, internet. My dad had just passed away. I was running his business and I had extra time and money on my hands and I was like, I think this is what I want to do, but am I allowed? And then the answer was yes, I'm, I'm absolutely allowed to do this. And it felt really crazy and it all happened really fast. Within a month or two, I had moved in. <laughs> So this would run about $80,000. You can click a button on their website and actually buy it. So there's little customization in that process. It was essentially move-in ready. But other than that, it was big open space. I wanted to make it real, right? The last thing I wanted to do was to take this beautiful house and junk it up. Tiny houses are hard to furnish. <laughs> so I really liked the ability to build things that actually fit and that were intentional and multi-purpose, which is very important. I was able to put a lot of my own design elements into it and really make it what I wanted. So I live in Charlotte full-time. I have a regular size house with a regular size life. I have two children. They are 10 and 12. So this is a great escape. And I come up here to come to the mountains, go hiking, get away. I found a Coney Bell and said, holy cow, this is it. It fits the needs. I can come and go, it can be a rental, it's close to Charlotte, it's in the mountains. The costs are less across the board as far as maintenance, upkeep, and it rents really well because people love tiny homes and want to check them out. Is it for me? Is it not? Should I buy one? And I love that they get to experience my place and help them through that decision. In the Oconee Bell community, this lot is 600 a month. That includes water. So I pay for electric, I pay for internet. They also take care of the yard, which is good because I'm not here all the time, so that's important. Oconee Bell also handles the rental and they keep the place booked. We have here an escape tiny home, measures about 30 feet long, 10 feet wide, and I think at its highest, it's like 13, 14 feet. As you can see, we are on the deck. I really love this space. If any of you have ever spent any time in a tiny house, you know that outdoor living space is a part of the living space. So I love that, you know, we have the couch over here. There's also like the bar rail where you can sit and have a beer or coffee and just be out in the nature. This is an amazing window. It's about five by six feet. At nighttime, when this is all lit up, it looks really warm and cozy, very inviting. The siding is a dark black painted wood. I really love the sleek modern look. I feel like it sets it apart from a lot of the other tiny homes in a Coney Bell. And it's all a part of that look that really drew me to this model. And the metal roof, super easy, low maintenance, and it has that romantic rain on the roof feeling that is really special. Let's talk about the install. Uh, I think one of the most important things about the tiny house is being prepared to receive your tiny house, right? So really important to make sure that your space is going to fit your tiny house <laughs> and the land is flat, all those things. A tiny house install is not something I would try to DIY. I could not have done it myself. The people at Oconee Bell were super helpful. The guy who drove it all the way from Minnesota, shout out to him. But yeah, definitely not something you want to leave up to chance. All right, let's head inside. Welcome to the inside of my house. When I walk in here, this space, it, it just feels light, right? There's so many windows. It just feels like full of possibility. The beauty of the tiny house is you only have what you need and nothing more. And that is a huge sort of like weight off my shoulders coming from a full-time, full-size house. 
And one of the cool things about tiny homes is because they're tiny, you can afford these tiny little luxuries. So I really tried to bring things into the home that were handmade by someone local, by a friend, by myself, little things like that that make it feel homey, but also someone else's home. One of the things I love about vacation rentals is that like aspirational lifestyle. You can step into someone else's vision. I really love cooking, it's a big part of my life. Food is a big part of my life. So I really, really love this full-size kitchen. The sink, it's nice and deep, which is helpful. You know, you have this extra storage space. If I lived here, maybe I would use this differently, but I just think it's a nice display of pretty things. <laughs> the stove is amazing. It's all you need, two burners, oven. I love when guests make special things like cupcakes or cookies if it's a special occasion. A microwave, I don't have one of these at my own home, so it feels like really luxurious to have a microwave. I'm like, ooh, what can I microwave? <laughs> the cabinets are nice, there's plenty of storage space. I've never felt cramped. You have this beautiful window, you know, right now it's fall, you can see the leaves, such a beautiful scene. Again, I made as many things sort of multi-purpose as possible. So what you can do, you can fold this down. If I'm in the kitchen, this gives people a spot to hang out and still interact. All right, so let's check out the bathroom. In here you have a 36 inch shower, which feels plenty big to me. We have a sink, just what you need, nothing more. Toilet, it is just a good old fashioned toilet, does not compost, it flushes just like normal. But what I do really love is this heater vent on the floor. So there's nothing worse than like a cold bathroom in the morning. So you turn this on, be cozy and enjoy your morning routine. All right, so let's head to the living room. And the first thing you'll probably notice is all of the windows. Really, really nice to feel like you are just sitting outside almost. And there's a few things I really love in here. One is the couch. I spent countless hours on the internet trying to find a couch that would fit, be affordable, look good. And eventually uh, a friend and I made this couch. Uh, thanks Jeremy for all your help. He built the metal base and the wood. I got the cushions custom made. I designed the fabric for the pillows. This couch also serves as a bed, so all of these cushions are removable. My son has slept here for a week and loved it. Again, I wanted something that was like multi-purpose, comfortable to hang out in, but also comfortable to sleep on. Let's come over here and check this out. This is actually under the stairs, really great use of space. I have books up here, awesome record player down there. And you know, this goes into like the whole thing of slowing down, having real things, having quality things. And I love that the guests get to like put records on. There's just something really special about that. Washer, dryer, all in one for all of those who are not familiar with tiny houses. This is pretty common. Also a giant pain in the butt. <laughs> Takes forever to do your laundry. And you know, word of warning, it is loud. Like the loudest thing you've ever heard. But I'm grateful for it, it's here. It's great to have clean clothes. And next, let's go upstairs. And this is the loft space. This space, again, you're surrounded by windows, especially cool at night when the stars are out. This table, and you could have dinner at it, host a dinner party in a tiny house. You know, it's possible here. You could do work. All of these cushions lift up. There's storage underneath. My friend and I designed and built these. I designed the fabric, he built them. Having that multifunctional space and storage is awesome. I love it up here. So I am sitting down, I am five foot five. I cannot stand up. My daughter who is 10 can, <laughs> at least for now. If I lived here on a daily basis, I think it would be tough to crawl around my living space. But once you know it, and once you know, when I get up the stairs, I'm going to have to like be seated, it's fine. Now let's head across the space and show you the bedroom. Feels pretty luxurious to have this much space over your head when you're sitting on your bed in a tiny house loft. 
when you're up in the loft, it really seems like you are in the sky and it is like you're in your own little planetarium. This is a queen size bed. Funny enough, out of all the projects that I have put my boyfriend through, and thank you by the way, John, um, he said that putting this bed together in this loft space was one of the hardest things we've ever done, like he's ever done. If I had to do anything differently, I would ditch the bed frame. And I, I hope he doesn't get mad when he hears me say that. I would just go for the mattress on the floor. It would give you a little bit more height and it's just not necessary. I thought it was, but you know, that's life. This place is definitely a part of our family. The kids love it. It has been a really magical experience for them. I do love these tiny homes deeply, the lifestyle and like quality of life that it, it brings. Thank you.